goaltender look in a period of hockey. Donatelli, shot, save made directly in front on the chance. Again, Rush in the turnaround shot, and again, Reddick makes the save. Pokey Reddick is playing. Dumped it back into the corner. Marshall, the defenseman, was cutting on the far wing. They could get caught up ice. Marshall starts it the other way. Thunder back in the attack center. Tip, great save by Bester. Oh, what an opportunity. That is a perfect tip. Short-handed, but it's just a one-nothing game with the Las Vegas Thunder on top. She is only 22 years old out of Quebec, and she is a goaltender for the Thunder. She's going to make an appearance, we hope, on ESPN2, if all goes well, on November 8 in Las Vegas. This is the first woman who has been able to break the barrier to play in a men's professional sports league. Last season, that was the record she put up. Knoxville and Nashville, the place she comes from a hockey family. We had her brother on ESPN2 just about a week and a half ago, Pasquale, who played some outstanding hockey. This is men on Rayom. We are delighted to have you with us. We are really looking forward to the game on the 8th. And I have to say this and ask you this question. All the people I've talked with about you today all have said one thing to me, the first thing they say about you. She has her feet on the ground. None of this has impacted the person that she was when she first started playing hockey. How do you do that? You know, first of all, uh, to have all this attention, I never expected all this attention. And for me, uh, it was just something new. And uh, I just tried to deal when uh, everything happened. And the only thing I wanted to play hockey. I love play hockey. I love to be out there. And everything around, it's, uh, it's not important for me. What I like to do is playing hockey. and. Uh, when uh, people ask me to do something else, uh, it's just uh, if I have time, if my training is done, if my practice is done, I'm going to do something else. Gary mentioned uh, that you're supposed to start on November the 8th. That is, that is correct. I mean, we, we're right on that. I can only imagine that, that there's a lot of pressure for anybody that wants to try and play a first game. Uh, but when there's going to be so much attention giving to it, given to it, we're going to be there. Do you feel the pressure mounting or do you feel pressure? It's just a lot of pressure because I don't play often. And when I play, it's the same thing, I think, for every third goaltender on any team. The third goaltender don't play a lot. And when you play, you need to play good because you're going to be a long time without playing. And uh, it's a lot of pressure. And it's not like a goaltender will play often, two or three games a week. And he can have more confidence playing because he knows that he's going to be back if you make a mistake. It's like any players, too. Uh, the players who play just one or two shifts a game, uh, every time they're on the ice, they play with really a lot of uh, nervousness. And I know. I was that kind of player at the end of my <laughs> career. Menno, what is the future in hockey for you? What are you looking to do with this game? For well, sure, the Olympics in 98, it's one of my goals. Uh, it's going to be for the first time the woman's going to be in the Olympics. And, uh, something then uh, I look forward as far as pro hockey I want to go uh, as far as I can uh, I work hard every year and uh, I try to get better and uh, take experience and see how far I can go well we're going to put you to work you know for a period you all ready for this yes she's going to be our analyst uh, she'll join Bill and I for the second period we'll be back with highlights and a look at the scoring make some I uh, make uh, some big save and uh, the Las Vegas have two good goaltender and uh, Ken Marachal and Poké Redek have a lot of experience how odd is it to you that he tries to kick rebounds past shooters? I mean, have you ever seen another goaltender like that? You know, every goaltender play their home style, and the four is kind of... That's his, right? Yeah, and he do it well. Mm -hmm. No, the Thunder are three good goaltenders, man. No, we're not going to let you get away with that. <laughs> Cleared up to the point, but not out. The Thunder on the power play. McDonough was trying to break short-handed and couldn't do it. Just underway, second period. A minute 29 left on the Thunder's fourth power play of the game. The Gulls in their white, trimmed with red and black, and with the puck and the teal uniforms, the Las Vegas Thunder. LaFave working on the near side goes back to the point. LaFave handles the puck a lot and plays a lot out there. Back into the middle, Bonk. Bonk got a shot off and had it blocked by the D and cleared out by McDonough. One minute remaining. Vegas, you are playing with some obviously very talented hockey players. I know that was the case wherever you have been, but when you look at this lineup, is this as talented as a lineup as you have ever had to, to face even in practice? I think it's the best lineup that I, I never have to play with and uh, to face. Uh, they have a lot of uh, players that have uh, initial experience in that team and a lot of uh, good guys outside the ice too. It's very important for hockey team when the guys are really good outside the ice. They're too. good guys then? Yeah. yeah. Face off will come to the left of Fester. He's on Jim Pike sitting over there on the bench. 53 seconds remaining on this power play. 
The third voice you are hearing in the booth, if you just tuned in, is the voice of Mano Rayom, who is one of the three goaltenders playing for the Las Vegas Thunder. She is not in uniform tonight. She's having a chance to sit in and do some color with us, and she is seeing Alan Bester. What do you think of Alan Bester as a goaltender? He did. He had a good uh, first period, too. He played well against us the last game. Uh, it's fun to see uh, they have two small goaltenders on the ice. That's why I feel better when I'm on the ice. <laughs> you don't feel so small. Yeah. <laughs> How tall are you? Five, six. That's plenty. I mean, you're taller than Patrice Lefebvre, aren't you? The same size. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you let him know that. <laughs> yeah. Cleared out of the zone. Petitoff got it out. Petitoff in his first game for the Gulls. Dropped back into the middle, but they missed the drop pass. And a three-on-one chance the other way. Fedotov hustling back to even it up. Shot saved. Bester rebound shot. Deflected wide of the net. Bassey low and picked up that rebound. I think they, uh, someone has to use uh, the jersey in Las Vegas and they forget to uh, bring back to the ring. Oh, really? Oh, Use it for commercial purposes, so now he wears 11. Usually he wears 76. Yeah. <laughs> but he said if he score a five goal tonight, he's going to keep this number. <laughs> oh, and he would too, wouldn't he? Well, he hasn't. He scored his first goal just the other night. He's really had trouble getting going. I, I imagine that the contract negotiations took something out of him. When you're involved in something like that, then you have to come back and start over because I don't think he's played yet the way he did last year. And especially when you don't score a lot at the beginning, you have a lot of pressure and it's worse and every game you try and you try harder and when you try too hard, you cannot uh, put right. the puck in there. Darren Van Imp cleared it around the boards. Brian Sullivan was there to get it out of the zone for great chances and the league's leading goal scorer last year, Ken Quinney, has made it a 2-0 game. Well, you'd have to think that part of the Las Vegas Thunder game plan against Alan Bester, because he's small, is shoot high. Radek Bonk had the first shot, and he ripped one over the net. Here's Bonk's shot. Not, well, he got a piece of it. Give Bester some credit. He got a piece of it. Then he saw it coming back, but when the rebound came out to Quinney in the slot, Zingo, the other side, the opposite side that Bonk shot to, high to the sixth side. And see Bester in goal, how he hunches over. I mean, he's a little guy, as we pointed and out. He play, uh, down he, play, low yeah, he plays too. crouched over, right. It's his fourth goal of the year. Quinney rifling that one to the right side, stick side, and he's at it again. So, my note, do the shooters shoot high on you, too? Sure, because I'm small and I play uh, down low, too. It's one of my problems. I have to, uh, to get bigger. At, <laughs> look at my, uh, the top of my net yeah. because a lot of guys uh, is going to try to shoot there. And if goaltending coaches tried to get you to stand more upright and not, not bend over as much? Yeah. <laughs> So a 2-0 lead, Thunder on top here as they're trying to take the third game of the season from the goals, having won the previous two, each of those one goal games, trying to get on the board the goals. Loach had it in the corner, got tied up, poke checked away, they try and break it out through the middle, Thunder sending people, McBain, McBain gets checked, Benetoff, McBain comes back to get it, pays for it, Jason Marshall. Got a pretty good piece of it. He comes right back. McBain was able to get that puck, takes the shot. Save made by Bester. Outstanding shift. Not for the shot. Right. Because uh, it was sure the guys uh, showed him he got a shot. That he come out and right. he had to come back very quick. Yep. Now he's trying to get back after the shot. You can see how far out of the net Pokey Reddy was. Looked like Lonnie Loach was trying to do the same thing on Pokey that the Thunder guys are doing with Alan Bester, and that is get it up on him. I mean, we've talked about the and fact that these goaltenders aren't that big. Yep. Now he's trying to get back after the shot. You can see how far out of the net Pokey Reddy was. Looked like Lonnie Loach was trying to do the same thing on Pokey that the Thunder guys are doing with Alan Bester, and that is get it up on him. I mean, we've talked about the and fact that these goaltenders aren't that big. Especially when you're small, you need to come out more of your net to uh, cover more space. Mm -hmm. Did you use the old strings to practice angles on with the putting the strings on the goal post? I used to do that when I was younger. Did you start that way? Yeah. Well, I've seen guys at the NHL. Now we got one going on the far side corner. Wow. wow. Bobby Joyce of the Thunder. Jeez. And Barry Drieger of the Gulls in white. And I want to wow. tell you that was a major league fight. And I got to tell you, match. yeah, Bobby Joyce is not the guy that you would figure on the Las Vegas Thunder team that would end up throwing him, and especially throwing him that well. Bobby Joyce isn't a fighter by trade. No, but he did a good job he, on that fight. Yeah, he did. Hey, listen, it's not whether you win them or not, it's that you show up. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever been in a scrap? No, I never have to fight. I think I don't have the size to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Drager, who is six foot two hundred four, and Joyce six one one ninety five. 
And I mean, they leveled it. They didn't even wait. They just no. went at it. No. People will remember Bob Joyce coming to the Boston Bruins in 1988 for the playoff run and then in the playoffs, and he teamed up with Craig Janney. They both came out of the Olympics, Bob Joyce from the Canadian program and Craig Janney from the U.S. program. And Bob Joyce had a tremendous...